Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning uh, for the GDOT subrecipient workshop. Uh, I'm going to go over the uh, risk assessment portion uh, of the workshop. Um, just to touch a little bit on that with everyone uh, and some of the areas that we have for the risk assessments uh, and some of the issues that we have with those uh, that we do and that are very common. All right. Um, why? Our funding depends on it. Um, FTA is responsible for conducting oversight activities to ensure that sub recipients of grants use funds in a manner consistent with their intended purpose and in compliance with regulatory and statutory requirements. GDOT is the FTA grant recipient and we are the flow through entity for the FTA funds and sub those funds down to you, the sub recipient. And in order for those funds, uh, you as the subrecipient receiving those, we must ensure that you as the subrecipient are compliant because GDOT must be compliant. And if you're not compliant, we're not compliant. So the risk assessments, they identify and correct deficiencies on an ongoing basis. The project managers, use the risk assessment tool during the risk assessment interview, which is a desk review that's conducted annually to demonstrate oversight and compliance to FTA during the state management review, which is what GDOT goes through um, about every three years with FTA. Project managers schedule and conduct the risk assessment with each subrecipient to go over 10 review areas financial management, technical capacity, maintenance, ADA, Americans with Disability, paratransit, fixed route for the 5307s, Title VI civil rights, procurement, charter and school bus, drug and alcohol, and Section 5307 requirements. Each review area is scored. The recipients are ranked medium, low, and high. A high risk will warrant a full compliance review. The statewide summary of risk assessments for the rule for this past year, as you can see um, from the pie chart here, that procurement was the, the highest risk. Um, and, and from FY22, um, Several of our subrecipients ranked pretty high in the procurement area, and they were ranked in the medium, but because they were so high in the procurement, they did warrant a uh, full compliance review. As, and as you can see here from the statewide risk assessment uh, results from the rules, we had 49 that ranked low, 16 in the medium category, and five that ranked high that warranted full compliance reviews. The risk assessment process uh, for calendar year 21 and 22, uh, they were virtual risk assessments and they're going to be coming up again in 23. Um, the project manager is going to email the documents to you. Um, they're going to be some new documents. Uh, everyone will receive these so you know what you got a plan for, what you have to pull together to provide your project manager. Uh, it will be virtual. Um, so you will be able to attend it through Teams or whichever way the project manager wants to set this risk assessment up. A lot of them were done over the phone uh, in past. The subrecipient um, after the risk assessment will receive uh, concurrence letters or corrective action plans from their project managers for areas of deficiency. So if you do receive those, um, we will review them, uh, accept it, and respond back with your corrective action plan. And then we'll follow up and close out those uh, corrective actions. Right. How can I Keep from scoring high on the next risk assessment. Carefully read through your findings memo. 
you know, work with your project manager on an ongoing basis, uh, you know, and develop a corrective action plan. Follow your corrective action plan. Document that you are following your corrective action plan. Also, when they send you the risk assessment tool in advance, uh, a lot of you should already have that. Look through that risk assessment tool. Uh, look at the compliance areas that we're going to be looking at. Um, in addition to the 5311 admin guide, uh, uh, all the areas are covered into um, the 5311 admin guide for the 5311 programs. Uh, 5307 as well, uh, you know, and the FTA circulars. You know, reach out to your project managers uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, uh, find out what areas you need to be discussing with them. How can I keep from scoring high on a risk assessment continued here? Uh, keep GDOT informed. You know, notify your project manager. If you're planning to make a large purchase using FTA funds, let your project manager know um, any procurements for that matter. Uh, there's a checklist. There's procedures that need to be followed, you know, documents that need to be kept and followed uh, before you make that procurement. Um, are you planning to enter into a TPO or other contract services? You know, send that documentation to GDOT for review and concurrence before you sign those documents. You know, update your website, you know, with your ADA, your Title VI. Um, make sure that things are being followed, processes are being kept. Um, if something happens to your drug and alcohol testing program, uh, notify your project manager. Have you had any ADA or Title VI complaints? Did you notify your project manager of that? Um, lots of turnover with staff, uh, key turnover with staff. And those are the items that can, and those deficiencies can lead into uh, full compliance reviews. Uh, but keeping your project manager informed and in the loop on a lot of these things and documenting these items, uh, they can curve off a full compliance review and the findings, right? Are there any questions from anyone on that? All right, well, the risk assessments kind of lead into the next area, which is the compliance uh, and full compliance reviews. And I will turn that over to uh, Mr. Bill Powell.